Welcome back to another episode of the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got Bert, the Hurt, and Lanny. And guys, could this be the next dividend growth beast in the dividend growth investing world? There is a hot stock that Bert and I want to talk about because Bert owns it, I own it. And the question is going to be is, do you own it or do you want to own it after this video? Smash that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's freaking go, everybody. Let's get to financial freedom. Give it a thumbs up again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for everyone that just took the time right now to do it. We are amped up. We are ready to go. It is Sunday morning. The coffee is brewing. Um, and it's time to talk about a stock. Get that coffee. Let's go. Time, time to talk about a stock. Time to talk about the next big dividend growth. Almost, guys, we talk about, I'm going to put it out there. Bert and his wife own a couple hundred shares of Johnson & Johnson. This video is not about J&J, &J, but we always call them good old reliable. And could this dividend growth stock be the next good old reliable? Mm -hmm. Can't wait to talk about it. Cleveland Browns play today. So here we go, brownies. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's so guys, about. Let's go. This is, this is what it's all about. Stock is markets up, you know, no questions there, up 19, 20%. We're filming this here on November 23rd, but this stock's actually down this year, Bert. Hmm. That's down. Not, yeah, they're down nearly 7%, down 10.5% over the last one year. It's true. Oh, wee, this is fun. It's an interesting company. It's one that we haven't talked about for a while. So, what's I. So until we do the big reveal here in a second, I bet a lot of you have no clue which stock is going to be featured. Yeah, everybody right now is gripping their chair because they just drank coffee and oatmeal probably. So it's probably not because of this video. Um, and they want to know what is this dividend growth stock we are talking about here, guys. We are talking about the <laughs> Cummins, ticker symbol CMI. $224.51 stock price, Cummins, a beast of a stock here. And Bert, they just had a great earnings release that was put out in November. Um, they had record operating cash flow. Their revenue is off the charts. They're on pace for over $32 billion plus in annual revenue right now. Oh so just God. a small amount. Small amount. So who is Cummins? Because I, I would imagine a lot of the people here aren't that familiar with the company unless you're in the automotive sector um, or the trucking sector for that matter. They make engines, they um, power generation, um, they may yeah, make distribute engines, filtration, power generation products. They they make the muscle for a lot of the trucks you see flying on the road. They, they are a huge player in that space. And I can tell you from the old trips we used to make uh, across I-80, Lanny, you would see see the Cummins plants, you'd see the Cummins shop, and the, the logos everywhere. Yeah, you got to love when you see the logo on the truck when you're either driving behind one or you're driving next to one, guys. And yeah, you know, they had, um, you know, over almost eight and a half billion in revenue this last quarter, yep. up 15% versus the same linked quarter last year. Um, and you would think that, oh, it's probably all overseas. But actually, in North America, sales were up 16%, with international revenues up 13%. Um, and the uh, it's very interesting to just see the tide turning to North America versus international right now. Um, but again, the stock you know, ha has been down this year, despite all of this strong performance. Yeah, that's right. And I'm just looking through an article here. I think it's great. You see the numbers, everything's great. Profits up, net income's up when you look at that earnings released. Um, and then they're like, oh yeah, they just drop in there. They made another major acquisition of an axle and brake specialist, Meridor, to help boost their bottom line. So they're not just stopping. They're going to keep going until they get the full suite of what they can offer these companies. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, you know, and we actually peeled back the layers too, both Bert and I. We, um, you know, the reason why we're like, wow, could this be like the next good old reliable dividend growth stock? Because, guys, we'll put it out there already before going through the metrics, but they do have 17 straight years plus of growing dividends. Great. Um, and the funny part about it is, is that we went back 10 years. We're looking back at the last 10 years of dividend growth to see like how bad it has been, but 
The lowest that's the increase. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> I said that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the lowest of the lows that they've had was three percent during COVID. Yeah, three percent, and that's it. There's some bangers. Uh, there's some double digit bangers, but a lot of the years you just see numbers between that five to eight percent, which is again why we called them old reliable with Johnson and Johnson. Because there's always six to eight percent coming to slotting right into that spot too, into that, yeah. into that sweet area. It's really nice. So what we'll do here on today's video, guys, you know, after you take a quick sip of your coffee, definitely hit the like button, subscribe, and get your beer ready for your football games today, guys. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna look at Cummins, uh, you know, dividend stock metrics through the DD stock screener, price to earnings ratio less than the S P 500, dividend payout ratio less than 60% history of dividend growth, look at the dividend growth rate, and we'll look at the dividend yield as a little cherry on the top. We'll also compare that to one of their competitors called Eaton Corp, ticker symbol is ETN. So we just want to do like a quick side by side because I think it's fairly startling when you see it. Um, it's hard to find an apples to apples competitor. Um, some stuff was saying Caterpillar, John Deere, Rockwell Automation. I'm like, eh, Forget yeah, about Rock, it is what Rockwell, you Rockwell, maybe, but I was like, yeah, we'll stick with Eaton for now. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, to kick us. What's that? Where's Eaton headquartered, Lanny? Gosh, right in our backyards, right, Bert? Out here in, uh, we'll, we'll call it Beachwood, Ohio, but we'll call it Cleveland right now. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's a very niche area. Um, or we, their second headquarter, because they're actually dubbed out in Dublin, Ireland. But... Yeah, tax benefits there. It's, um, tax benefits you know we love our northeast Ohio. that building is massive their headquarters is a disgusting beautiful building it is it, yeah they did a nice job designing it but it is it is not a small building okay so let's go through here comments trading at 224.51 earnings per share 1919 that's a p.e ratio of 11.70 lanny how does that compare to eaton Jeez. Okay. So below 12 huh? for comments will eaton their trade at 228.91 and future earnings are looking at about ten dollars and four cents, so twenty three p. That's an easy one. Much higher for Eaton, coming significantly lower. Their annual dividend is six dollars and seventy two cents. So a payout ratio of thirty five percent per CMI. Whoa, that's pretty great. What is because because we'll get to the the next metric, but Eaton's three dollars forty four cents, also a payout ratio of thirty four percent. So right behind cmi and a low payout ratio beautiful we already talked about the dividend history they've increased it for 17 years their five-year dividend growth rate is 8.13 percent and as we talked about their 10-year average is 10.71 percent wow so 10-year average is 10.7 five years 813 you know past year they did a seven percent dividend increase the year before that 8.3 year before that 7.4 so you're starting to see this just gosh, good old reliable dividend increase, right? And Bert, with a payout ratio of 35%, what do you expect from CMI? You expect them to be able to keep in having that strong dividend growth. You don't see any reason why they can't stop with those seven and eight percent bangers. And then maybe they'll throw in a nine one percenter. Maybe they'll throw in a 10 percenter. You never know. You never know. I'm kidding. Hey, yeah, Bert's you mustache flies off. Yeah, God, I don't know if that thing's ever coming back again. So, yeah, they have the ability to continue having strong, consistent dividend growth. That's what we like about CMI. You know, eating, eating uh, nine plus years of growth, 5.45% um, dividend growth rate for five years. Their 10 year is 7.5%. And um, very similar to Cummins when they did a 3% during COVID in 2020, Eaton only did a 2.8%. So, both lowest increases in the last 10 years came during COVID makes complete sense. Yeah. So let's look at that yield here. CMI's yield is full. It, well, we can't, round, we no, we can't round it. We always say two decimal points. We cannot round it. Their yield is 2.99%. Womp, wah. Did not make the 3%, but, and they, I technically can't even say it's 2x Eaton. Eaton is 1.50%. <laughs> this is how frustrating this one is right here for both yeah. Bert and I. But what's interesting is the yield is almost doubled. Can't say it's doubled. Almost doubled. But their payout ratios are the same, which I think is very interesting here. And that's a testament to how CMI's PE ratio is half 
of Eaton's payout ratio. Yeah, it's interesting. It's yet the like, growth rate on the dividend is more. Hmm. Finkel is Einhorn, and Einhorn is Finkel. You know, I think and you got two peas in the pod, right? One's probably a more of a growth stock like Eaton, and then the other one's a dividend growth stock, CMI. I was just this dividend is growth stock. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have I have dividends. I you know me. I need more. I have a dividend. <laughs> Man, we're having too much fun over here, guys. Yeah. Also, like this video. Let us know if you guys own CMI and Eaton, by the way. Let us know in those comments. Yeah. All right, everyone. So we'll put the chart up here comparing them. Uh, just to run through comments metrics again, P ratio 11.7, payout ratio 35%. Um, Five-year dividend growth rate is 8.13%. Years increasing is 17. And the yield is 2.99%. It is not 3%. So, Lanny, what are your thoughts here? Well, guys, they're trading at, gosh, I, I don't even want to say a premium because they're really not with that P-E ratio. Um 224. I, I want them over 3% before I would consider buying more of them. You're not that um, far off. <laughs> no, but I know they're not. A couple pennies, right? So, you know, I would, um, you know, gosh, if, if they got to like 215, I think I'm yeah. acquiring a few more shares. Yeah, we were joking right before we started this. Um, I always historically said I loved CMI at 200. That was my point for buying it. But now that you see the metrics here, there really isn't a reason why it has to be a $200 per share threshold. Um, the metrics just look great. So if you're looking to keep adding, if I'm looking to sprinkle some money into stock that's in a great spot, CMI is great. I also think if you're looking to build a new position and you just want a great stock with growing metrics, um, strong dividend growth and a great yield, CMI is at the top of the list. I'd like to hear it. But Bert, what what would your price point be? Um, you said two fifteen. I'm gonna say two fourteen ninety nine. All right, this guy is about to get his butt yeah. whooped. All right, now. well, in all seriousness, I I mean, I honestly think around two ten, two fifteen, and, and that I think is great for it. What what would your guys's price point be on Cummins? Two hundred, two fifteen, two twenty five, aka the price that you know they're below that right now. Let us know in the comments. Let us know what other stocks you're buying right now, what other stocks are on your hot watch list as we head into the deep into the holiday season. Bert, what else? What else do we want then? If you have not subscribed already, please do so. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up, please do so. And Lanny, what else do we need to tell these people out there? You're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert, the hurt. And Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.